Okay, I will begin by uh, apologizing to those whose work I cannot cover because time is finite and uh, I will talk about uh, a little bit of the physics and the simulations work that we have done for INO, but I think I will already say that uh, because there has been so much delay, which I think everybody knows, uh, it's also been a plus point because it's given us more time in which to work out more of the physics goals, but the physics goals keep shifting. So that's a game you really cannot win. Whatever it is, I will uh, present it here. And I thank the organizers for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, make this presentation. There's a lag between the two, which is very unnerving. I think I will go to the other side. Uh, now I understand what the other speakers were saying. So here are the neutrinos in red from the sun. And, uh, oh, okay, ah, yeah, it is very slow, I'm sorry. So uh, here is the, here are the classic results of the solar neutrino experiments. I have lots of slides and <laughs> there's a length contraction involved because time is limited. So yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. Everybody knows those neutrinos from the sun, so I don't have to show them further than that. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this is the classic results of the solar neutrino experiments uh, where uh, the solar neutrinos were measured in three modes. Uh, very early experiments uh, uh, from charge current uh, scattering where the new e, new e becomes electron and they found one third of the uh, expected events. Then came the uh, Japanese experiment with pure water where they found half the expected events. And while they were still figuring out whether these are actually neutrinos from the sun, because that was really what Kamioka showed that there was this peak with respect to the instantaneous direction with respect to the sun. There came along the snow experiment, really beautiful experiment, which measured not only these charge current and the elastic scattering events and confirmed the earlier results, but also showed that in the neutral current sector, where every neutrino counts, not just the new E's which were expected to come from the sun, that this ratio is actually equal to the expected rate. And therefore the sun does shine in neutrinos exactly as Bakal and his collaborators had predicted. And the reason for the shortfall, therefore, is neutrino oscillations. It's the property of the neutrino. And these neutrino oscillations in two flavors can be uh, expressed pictorially as uh, two mass eigenstates mixing in a proportion pro uh, proportional to this angle theta for two flavors. So that as you move along in distance away from the source, you either have uh, you have different amounts of new E and new mu or new, new one and new two. And that gives you the, the, the observed depletion of the neutrinos from the sun. And the snow experiment confirmed that these are actually uh, uh, due to oscillations and not due to any other properties such as uh, decoherence, decay, many other possibilities were ruled out over time. And you can extend this uh, uh, analysis to the three flavors in a very direct fashion. You just have many more mixing angles and uh, and uh, mass square differences. Now, uh, once this was established, of course, uh, you have neutrinos from several sources and uh, oscillations were seen in many of them. And in, in this context, the India-based neutrino observatory, uh, actually two decades ago, proposed uh, the possibility to build such an underground neutrino detector. So the proposal actually contains both the observatory itself and the, and the uh, detector as well. Uh, to study in particular atmospheric neutrinos. So what will INO do or what does INO propose to do? It is actually a funded project. It's funded uh, as a mega science project by both the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Atomic Energy, which are the uh, traditional funding agencies for particle physics in India. Uh, immediate goal, <laughs> which is not so immediate, but continues to remain uh, the prime focus uh, is the creation of an underground laboratory for research in neutrino physics. But we expect that it will actually diversify into many other areas of science because it is a facility that is available and will always be useful. And what is also funded are two other components of this uh, lab. One is the, uh, the main detector to study neutrinos, which is the magnetized ion calorimeter detector, which will study atmospheric neutrinos, as I said, and also a, a center for particle physics and detector technology, R&D, which is a very important component that as, as we uh, proposed, uh, sorry about the breathlessness, old COVID remnant, uh, will, uh, well, we, which is already functioning at Madurai, but in borrowed premises and also uh, requires its own, uh, own uh, uh, whatever lo uh, location, which is, sorry? No, no, it is not slow or fast. 
the breathlessness shows up in the in the microphone because of the COVID. So it's it sounds very bad, but I'm sorry, I cannot help it. I, it's not fast. Okay. So the other 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 thing I want to really emphasize about I know is the graduate training program, which was started 13 or 14 years ago, I think now, uh, to train students. And it, it was very special because these students got uh, trained in both experimental and theoretical aspects of, of the detector. And I think it was a very unique project. It's not, not it, the, we have the last batch of students still with us, but we have not taken students for the last three years because of certain uncertainties in the proposal itself. And I think that this is, a, this is something that really should be revived because it has been extremely successful. And in fact, whatever I'm going to show you from now on would not have been possible without the contribution of these students. And the final statement, of course, it's a completely indigenous project and uh, something therefore very special to me at least. So what is it that we will study here in ICAL? So the detector ICAL is a magnetized ion calorimeter detector. Uh, borrowed the slide from Super K, but it's the same physics. Cosmic rays come, come in, produce secondary pions, which decay to muon type neutrinos, and the muon itself decays to both mu and nu e type neutrinos. So you're going to get mu is to e in the ratio of two is to one. And any deviation from this ratio is a signature of oscillations, which already Super K has established. So what is the particular uh, uh, unique aspect of, of ICAL then? That the interactions that we are interested in, when mu mu on the charge current interaction goes to mu minus, and the anti mu goes to mu plus, and the magnetized ion calorimeter tells you that mu minus and mu plus will bend differently in the magnetic field. And therefore I can count them separately, which means I can count nu mu differently from the nu mu bar. And since the nu mu and nu mu bar, this is, the surface of the earth, but there is an atmosphere on the other side and there are neutrinos produced from the other side. And when those neutrinos go through the earth uh, and hit, reach the detector, the matter effects that the neutrinos experience on passing through the earth are different from the matter effects that the anti-neutrinos experience on going through the earth. And therefore we will be able to distinguish the neutrino and uh, nu mu and nu mu bar interactions or the matter effect with respect to the earth. And that will enable us to focus on one particular property, which I'm going to tell you what it is. So in a, in a moment when I talk about the physics part. So in, in particular, the, the goal of the, the proposed ICAL detector will have three modules, uh, which are 17 kilotons each of iron uh, layers separated by a gap, air gap, in which will sit the active detector elements, which are the RPCs, uh, which are just glass plates with gas flowing inside at a high voltage. And when a charged particle like a muon passes through, uh, it uh, discharges the gas in a localized fashion. Uh, there are pickup strips in uh, say X direction on the top, in the Y direction below, and the localization is three centimeter by three centimeter. And that's the pixel size of hit that you get in the detector. And as the muon passes through the detector, you're going to get a long track of these hits with uh, both uh, uh, spatial location and timing, which is a order of a nanosecond. So the highlights of this, there are many uh, factors. The magnetic field in the center of the detector is around 1.5 Tesla, uh, small compared to even, a, even an MRI machine. Total number of RPC units is about 30,000 uh, of about two meter by two meter uh, dimension approximately. And the main challenge is that the associated electronic channels for this is nearly 4 million. So this is not something that can be done in a lab, although there are many research institutions and universities as associated with ICAL, it needs a large industry interface. And so the, the, the objective or the process that has happened over the last few years is to start out with the R&D in these research institutions and then to do a technology transfer to industry. Okay, so this is in ICAL in brief. So what is the physics that we can learn from ICAL? So uh, we start out with putting the known parameters in context. Uh, essentially what Shubhavati talked about uh, already yesterday, I will simply highlight what is required for our uh, physics goals. So we start out by looking at the mass square differences, which are not very well known. Uh, the solar mass difference is uh, about uh, 60 to 80 times smaller than the atmospheric mass difference. Uh, these are the three mass eigenstates. There's a small red color over here, I may, may not be visible. So the, co the color combinations over here show the admixtures uh, of these flavor eigenstates in the mass eigenstates and this very small value, which corresponds, uh, sorry, should I put that earlier, corresponds to theta one three at the cross generation mixing of about eight to nine degrees, uh, tells you that uh, it is possible to measure uh, uh, delta CP, the CP violating phase 
uh, in the neutrino sector, because if theta 1, 3 is zero, then that phase is not measurable. So this is a very important result that came out from the reactor neutrino experiments uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, the other quantity that is an open question is uh, theta 2, 3 looks maximal. Is it exactly maximal? Is it greater than 45? Is it in the second octant or less than 45 in the first octant? That is a question. And the third question is, is M3 squared the most massive or the least massive of these mass eigenstates, because the solar and uh, Kamlan experiments have established that M2 is heavier than M1, but we don't know whether M3 is the heaviest or lightest mass eigenstate, and that is the mass ordering problem. So in this context uh, that we are going to build uh, INO, we are going to focus on primarily these issues. What is the mass ordering, which leads to the mass hierarchy, because that depends on the absolute zero of the mass scale, and what is the octant of uh, theta 2, 3. So here is a quick primer. Let us look at the mass matter effects. I talked to you already about neutrinos coming through the earth, interacting with earth matter and reaching the detector. And this red highlighted object is the primary consideration. You can see that there is a ratio, which is uh, A, the matter, matter dependent uh, uh, effect. The, uh, it's actually uh, twice energy times the matter potential uh, divided by the mass squared difference of the three and one mass eigenstates. And you can see that since the mass, uh, the sign of delta is not known, and the neutrinos uh, have positive A, whereas antineutrinos have negative A, this quantity can become zero if A and delta are both greater than zero, or A and delta are both less than zero. Which means that if the mass ordering is normal, so delta is greater than zero, then you will have a resonance effect possible where theta 1, 3 can become maximal in, in the neutrino sector. And if it's negative, then you will have the resonance, MSW resonance in the anti neutrino sector. And that's why with the magnetized ICAL, you can separate your new mu and your new mu bar. And therefore, you will be able to tell whether you have resonance in this sector or that sector, which means you can unambiguously pinpoint the hierarchy. So uh, that just says more of the same thing. So I will skip it. And this says more of the same thing too. And I will skip it. So I come next to the octant of theta 2, 3. So here it's a, it's a subleading effect. So already the matter effect was uh, suppressed by the factor of sine squared uh, uh, theta one three, which is small. And the, the octant effect, you can see that two theta two three is not sensitive to the octant. It has to be theta two three, which is sensitive to the octant. And that factor is coming with, uh, the, with the term uh, sine squared two theta one three matter, which can of course be enhanced but it is a small subleading effect. So the octant is going to be even harder to do that. And this is a generic statement, not necessarily tied to ICAL itself. And the current status of this parameter is that these are the global fits from two different, uh, the left side is from uh, the 2006 paper, the right side is from the 2007 archive number. And you can see that here, this prefers the best fit, uh, prefers to be in the second octant. Uh, 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 whereas, and this is for both the normal and the inverted uh, ordering, whereas on the right hand side, you see the updated neutrino 2020 super K data, which used to prefer the second octant, but now prefers the first octant. So in my opinion, I would say that the issue of the octant is still open. And this is something that we can ask a question about. The main thing to, to, to realize is that the, both the octant and the uh, matter mass ordering effects, which can be determined by ICAL, are going to be independent of the CP phase. And that will be something very important I will come to later. OK, so here I show, uh, just look at the top three uh, portions, uh, or in fact, just look at the central top one, which has theta 139 degrees with 5 GV neutrino energy. So one thing I forgot to highlight earlier, which I am now highlighting, if you look at this little structure over here, uh, we have assumed normal ordering. And so that's the, that's the core crossing effect at uh, uh, theta is around 30 degrees, 33 degrees. That's when it just starts to graze uh, the inner core of the Earth, so you can see the you can see the effect of of the MSW resonance. And the second is that uh, the octant. You, I have taken three and uh, black is the is the maximal mixing. Uh, the red is uh, less than forty five, and the blue is more than forty five. And so they will go in opposite directions, and that will give you the sensitivity to the octant. You can see the somewhat better in 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 this next slide, uh, where uh, where I have shown PE mu rather than P mu mu, although its contribution is small. So. Uh, so what you will find is that uh, you do have sensitivity to the octant. This, for example, shows you if I've taken the theta 2, 3 to be, say, uh, away from maximal in the first quadrant, say, 40 degrees, 
and I've assumed two different values of theta one three with the true value being in between. Then, at uh, if if theta one three was smaller, say about seven degrees, it would not uh, rule out the second octant spurious solution. But if theta one three is larger, then it will rule it out. So the octant solution, all I'm trying to say is, is going to be a complex interplay between the true true value of theta two three itself and the value of theta one three as well. And in fact, it also depends uh, on the right hand side on the true value of delta m squared. So it's going to be a very difficult measurement. Okay, and of course here results are much poorer. I've taken, I've assumed normal hierarchy and first octant, but you could, if you start out with the true octant being in the second octant, then the results are always poorer. That's because of the way the expressions depend on, on this parameter. So this is roughly the physics that we want to study. And this has been put into a simulations framework uh, with, uh, with the GIANT 4 based uh, simulation uh, programs uh, using uh, the Honda 3D atmospheric neutrino flux. And most of the results that I will show you is with events on the nuance uh, neutrino generator, though some of the more recent results are from Gini. Uh, they are not very different as far as this, uh, res these results are uh, concerned. And the magnetic field map has been generated using a magnet 6.0 software. So with this framework, we have used the Kalman filter algorithm because so this is a typical, uh, very exaggerated, you will not find such events, such clean events very often in the detector. This is more for us to appreciate that here is a vertex at the point, as a little hadron shower, which doesn't travel very far and the muons, which go as long thin tracks. And so those tracks are, those track events are uh, separated out with a uh, Kalman filter used uh, to, to reconstruct the sign of the charge. So whether it's new, new mu or anti new mu events, and of course the magnitude of the momentum as well, and whether it's up or down from the timing. Uh, the hadron energy is reconstructed by calibrating the total events. And uh, most of the results that I'm going to quote are from the INO white paper, which is here. So when I, when I don't have a reference, then it's from the INO white paper. So here is the muon response, uh, the, the resolution of the detector in the momentum, muon momentum, sigma by, by P. It doesn't matter what these are. Here uh, you have momenta from one to 20 GV, and you can see that the design of INO is, or ICAL is such that the best response is at five to 10 GeV where you have the MSW effect. So where the max matter effects are maximum, you have designed the detector to have the maximum sen sensitivity. You also have a sensitivity to hadrons, uh, not, not so good, but not so bad either. There is information in the hadrons that I will show you later. And here is the reconstruction efficiency around greater than 80% for more vertical angles and the charge ID efficiency, which is better than 98% for almost all energies, momenta greater than two GeV and a very good angular resolution of about one degree for the muons. So with this uh, simulations background, these are the study results that we have got. Uh, here, uh, here is the, the basic precision measurement as a function of sine squared theta two three and the modulus that is the magnitude of, of delta m squared three two. So on the left-hand side, I have shown you uh, from this reference, the current limits from various experiments in the different colors. And I have tried to blow up this right side figure so that the scales match, even though they are shifted, the central values are shifted so that the sizes of the potatoes are actually to, can be compared realistically. And the red potato on the right is what I know ICAL will achieve. But uh, you must remember that ICAL is yet to be built. So that is something we should always keep in mind. Other experiments are running, taking data, and will, it will improve as we go along. So the next uh, physics goal, which is the major physics goal of ICAL is, uh, is the mass ordering. So here, what I have shown is that, suppose I assume the normal ordering and I ask, how well can, uh, can we discriminate against the wrong ordering uh, by marginalizing all other parameters and ask what the delta chi square is for that? You'll see that in the runtime of 10 years for both true ordering being normal or inverted, I will be able to have a three sigma determination of this quantity. Uh, and the black line versus the red line is without and with the inclusion of the hadron. So even though the hadrons are not very well determined, the hadron energy actually improves this result. So uh, this result, however, is completely independent of the unknown CP phase. And I will tell you a little more about it when we come to synergies with other experiments. I just want to make one, one comment over here. I think this is a very famous graph. Uh, this is the lightest mass uh, neutrino uh, against the mass that will be measured in the neutrino less double beta experiment. And you can see that the, whether you have normal or inverted hierarchy has implications for both the model building and for discovery of neutrino less beta, double beta decay. And so this is a very, very important question. So the matter effect of the mass hierarchy which is the centerpiece of uh, ICAL physics, 
is actually such an important experiment that Minos, T2K, Nova, Pingu, Ice Cube, Juno, Dune, Hyper K, LBNE, and I'm sure I've forgotten other experiments are all probing this experiment, uh, this, this quantity, because it's such an amazing uh, and such an important quantity. And each is an amazing experiment, and each has different ways of doing this, as the community will know. And I think that INO will actually be complementary in its in its uh, approach to determining this quantity, in particular because many of these other or most of these other experiments have to disentangle the unknown CP phase effects from this quantity. But as I said, ICAL is independent of the CP phase. So that is something that we keep in mind when I talk about synergies. There is, I will briefly go through this. There are some updates on other physics with ICAL and where I have mentioned actually the references because they're not in the white paper. So you can, you, what happens if you actually look at the electron neutrinos, which are also there, you have very limited uh, uh, sensitivity, but you do have sensitivity. When you include the tau neutrinos, which are actually quite large in number, you can improve the, the octane sensitivity uh, to ICAL when that uh, tau neutrinos are combined along with the standard muon neutrino analysis. Uh, there's other, other studies that have been done, steriles, uh, probing non-standard interactions, probing neutrino decay, looking for signatures of Lorentz invariance violation. And of course, since atmospheric neutrinos come from, from 4 pi, you can do earth tomography because you, you remember that I showed you that the, the, the matter effect is, uh, is actually enhanced when the neutrinos actually do core coursing. So I will pick out actually two uh, non uh, oscillation non-neutrino physics results, which I thought are interesting, which are also there in the white paper. Uh, one is uh, solar dark matter. So when uh, you have a concentration of WIMPs in the sun, they annihilate and give you, so this is not uh, oscillation physics, but just detection of these muons. And the left-hand side shows the spin dependent and the spin independent cross-section limits. And the red colors are coming from ICAL and the other colors are from every other experiment. And of course you can see that xenon and lux uh, will beat every other uh, experiment, but there is sensit significant sensitivity from, from ICAL as well towards this dark matter. Uh, other is uh, heavy objects like magnetic monopoles can be determined from measuring their velocities. And you can see that this is the macro limit. Uh, this is the mass, masses in 10 power 16, 10 power 17 GeV range. And uh, these are the flux bounds that can be uh, determined uh, from, from the measurements uh, at ICAL over 10 years. So the bottom line, I think, is that there are a lot of exciting possibilities with this experiment. And so there, there has also been interest in, in looking to see how you can tweak, yeah, thank you. You can tweak ICAL uh, to, to improve or enhance the capability with respect to other, uh, other parameters. Uh, so I call them ICAL++. For example, uh, having additional side uh, scintillator detectors uh, to look for what are called collar events, which is a kind of in the indirect dark matter detection in the 10 to 50 GeV range, uh, which was related to the collar events. Uh, the low energy physics of atmospheric neutrinos, which is extremely sensitive, the curves correspond to different delta CP values. So it's a very, very uh, amazing fact that uh, atmospheric neutrino fluxes at high energies above 5 GeV are very sensitive. Uh, to the hierarchy and independent of delta CP, but the low energies, this is at 0.2 to 0.8 GeV, are sensitive to delta CP and independent of the, of the neutrino mass hierarchy, and therefore will be sensitive to the CP phase. So they're completely hierarchy insensitive, and therefore they will have sensitivity to the delta CP, but this, is, this has to be an enhanced detector. It cannot be the original one. So there are additional synergies with other experiments. Since, as we have, I have claimed so many times, the, the uh, hierarchy dependence is independent of the CP phase. It will help when combined with NOVA, LBL reactors to, to enhance uh, the significance of, of the hierarchy over the entire uh, delta CP range. You can see that otherwise they do not have sensitivity uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, half plane. Similarly, for the, uh, this is for the, for the mass hierarchy measurement to improve it so that you can actually reach three sigma in, in six years by combining with T2K and NOVA. And the, the measurement of delta CP can also be enhanced by, by including the ICAL data. So there are many synergies uh, and uh, I think they, can, they are being explored further. Uh, so now I come to what exactly is the R&D status. Uh, what is the current status of INO? Uh, although INO was fully funded in 2015, we've been having difficulties with clearances. So the actual construction of the, of, of the lab has been stalled for the last few years, but uh, a lot of, uh, a uh, lot of detector R&D has gone on, starting out, this is a very old slide, more than uh, 14 years old, starting from the small one meter by one meter RPCs and the test stands characterizing these RPCs, going to two meter by two meter and the current uh, manufacture of RPCs by industry. So that technology transfer has already happened. Uh, then uh, we come to the, uh, to the electronics, starting out from very simple electronics, 
Now moving on to the state of the art electronics for front end, back end data acquisition, et cetera. So I think I would, it would be fair to say that we are now completely ready to actually, uh, all the components are ready to be transferred to industry. This is our mini ICAL 85 ton at, uh, at Madurai in South India. Well, we are in South India, further south of India, <laughs> sorry. So uh, with the 11 layers of iron with RPCs, which you can't see. And here you can finally see the copper uh, here, this and this, uh, which, uh, which uh, gives you the magnetic field of 1.5 Tesla as required. And a lot of students have worked on this. It has been running through the pandemic. Uh, here are some summer students from uh, local colleges. And this is something I really want to highlight that I think that such an experiment will really be a boon for students. I think they just cannot overstate the case. Here are some, these were the first, uh, first results from, you can see the, the bending of these uh, uh, first uh, events from there uh, that has been characterized now and have actually got the cosmic ray muon flux uh, and compared with Corsica up to 3 GV, which matches so well. So in fact, we are very confident now. So it has, it's very important for not only testing your simulations, but also you're testing your Kalman filter simulations uh, uh, and other things. Uh, so the other proposal that is there is a cosmic uh, muon veto detector, which I don't want to spend time on because I don't have the time, but it's also a very interesting uh, proposal. So I, I want to spend two minutes on something that is uh, very close to my heart. I think this is about uh, outreach for INO, not just INO. I think many current and future proposed mega science projects are there. I think you will hear about some, some more of them in this session. Uh, maybe in the afternoon, and uh, some like I know are completely indigenous. These experiments are going to probe some of the most important frontiers of physics, astrophysics. And I think that we have to be very aware of the fact that we have to bring these innovations and ideas to the notice of the public, because there is a certain gap, I think, between the understanding and awareness uh, of, of the general public, not so much as students. Uh, and uh, they ha that has, I think, been the cause of many of our uh, clearances being delayed. So, I mean, the outreach or what is the t equal to zero start time of the experiment, I think is the same. So uh, there are different kinds of audiences. And I think that I would like to say for the benefit of others who might want to actually have a mega science project in India, some things that we have learned along the line is that students have always been enthused by our talks. I've always had students come up to me and ask, when can I join INO? When is it going to start? So that's not going to be a problem. I think that if we are really keen on this project, manpower is not, manpower, human, human resources, sorry, is not going to be a problem. But uh, uh, there are uh, other groups of people who have to be answered to, because I think when you have public funding, it is our duty to actually answer these questions and to try to convince people and especially environmental activists have asked many, many detailed questions regarding the lab construction and the nature of neutrinos. And I have forgotten to put over here, we have many, many uh, documents available on the INO website on all these issues. We have tried to answer from, you know, can our goats graze on your land up to how, what will happen to the dam 40 kilometers away when you start drilling. So we have answers to all these questions. I think they have to be taken very seriously the bureaucracy has to be convinced that you know it's, this is a project which has no commercial enterprise and cannot employ people on very in very large numbers. But the importance of doing this and its applications to society in many considerations, I, we have to seriously address this issue. Can be addressed, of course. Journalists, thankfully or otherwise, media attention is short-lived. But you have to be prepared to answer questions at a moment's notice. Uh, and of course, general audience, I think we have to actually tell them, because in my next slide, I actually hi highlight more about this, that uh, basic science, at least in India, is considered exotic, whereas technology, mobiles, TVs, cars are accepted without blinking an eyelid. So this uh, science and scientists are looked on with suspicion. Uh, I don't know whether it is, uh, what is the history behind it, but certainly I think we have not done enough work to tell people more about our, our work and, and the implications of our work. We have stayed in our ivory towers and we are, it's very important for us to, to dispel these doubts. For example, many things that have convinced people that I personally have used, discovered the electron 100 years ago, simply driven by curiosity. But you know, today we have electronics and computers because of this discovery. Same way positron was discovered. Today we have PET scans, medical imaging, etc. Everyone uses Swiggy and uh, and uh, uh, Ola for for their food and their, their transport. But uh, time on the GPS clock will be off by 30 mi 38 microseconds per day. 45 due to general relativity minus seven due to special relativity. If you don't make corrections for this, you will not get your Swiggy, your neighbor will get it instead. Uh, computers, of course, quantum computing, uh, knowledge of maths, which allows you to put your James Webb Space Telescope at the Lagrange point. All these, I think, are points where you have to convince people that I think science is relevant for society. I think without this, you will not get the project. But in conclusion, I would like to say 
that we have a proof of principle of all the components of ICAL already available. Uh, mini ICAL has preliminary results on the cosmic muon flux at low energy. We have a lot of interaction already with local industry. Uh, we have a plan to build a, a, a 120th scale module, 800 ton uh, engineering prototype, most likely in Calcutta. Uh, in addition, we have proven the value of the greatly successful INO graduate program. And I think this highlights the importance of a homegrown experiment where people, students can come and hands-on work on a detector and see how it works. We are still waiting for these clearances, which are proving hard to get. Uh, I think in spite of these delays, we believe that the physics reach will be complementary and still uh, uh, appropriate in, uh, with respect to current and future proposed detectors. There are many other future exciting possibilities. There will be more in the next talk by Vivek. So I think you can hear how many ideas we have. And I do believe that INO will galvanize science across the country by offering opportunities to students and industry to work in the cutting edge atmosphere. So, and this would not have been possible, as I said, without students and other collaborators. Thank you very much. Thanks, Indu. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening yeah. others about the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Not this good now the floor yeah. is open yeah. to question yeah. and comment. Rohini. Yeah. Wanted to ask you one question. Yeah. You showed synergy with other experiments. Uh, what about Juno? Juno is a very different experiment because Juno is looking, see, if you look at the sine squared term, you know, delta into L by E. So if you, you can think of delta as a Fourier transform of L over E. So there is an L, L delta of three one and delta of three two. And the little difference between them is like the beats that you will get. That's really what Juno is looking at. So it's a, it's a very different approach. But the thing is that if Juno doesn't get their 3% resolution, for example, if it is 5%, they will not see, uh, I mean, it's not as though they will be able to look at the hierarchy by integrating 10 years data, no. How many ever years of experiment, so, so, if they don't so get resolution that- Resolution is the key for Resolution is the key for Juno, so yes. that's why you have not- uh, really directly compared. No, 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 no. Because see, Juno is coming up. Juno is I under know. construction, no, will but come that's up. That's exactly why yes, I asked you yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, will, yeah. They are they are always on time, even though they have COVID shut down. They don't seem to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe I should have made a mention of it. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Yeah, I can hear. It's a great talk. Uh, so. I know it's taken, you guys have been at it for a long time. Yes. Two, three decades, but how are you funding the students? We have funding till 2023. <laughs> for training? No, we, yes, we have, yes, for, for fun. We have funding for, for the project till 2023. Okay. And of course we are in the business of trying to get that extension. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah. It also supports the detector R&D. No, no, ask the boss, the, the boss will clarify this. <laughs> that's also component is included in that project. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do have a few students left over. We have not taken new students in the last three years. That's not because of COVID, because I mean, everyone is worried about what happens after 2023. If the project doesn't get extended, then the students will will have to face the problem. So, but I, I am very positive that we will get this project extended. We will, we have struggled long enough. It has to come. <laughs> you cannot give up. Yeah. So, so in one of your slides, you were showing about the, the efficiency for the track reconstruction. And so, I think you talked about something like 80%. So I was just wondering, what is the main contributor for your inefficiency there? Oh, this okay. So I, I don't need to show that for, right. for this. So the, the, the thing is, when, when we say efficiency, uh, you see, we have 5.6 centimeter iron plates, right? And we have nanosecond uh, resolution RPCs. So it is very important for us to know up versus down because the matter effect is different between up and down. Right, so you have you have this particle going at 30 centimeters per nanosecond. So you need to have the particle going through at least four or five layers before you can actually make this up down discrimination. And if it's going more horizontally, then of course, even higher energy particles will not go through that many layers. That is why the, the efficiency drops as a function of the angle also. So you mean the, the just orientation of the track? Yeah, so one is the orientation is of the track and the other is, as I said, you have minimum number of events but because I, you know you I have think, i think i saw the the plot i think it's slide 23. <laughs> sorry there are so many slides that it will slowly go that is, okay one simple answer is that is mainly because of the multiple scattering this is the now your 5.6 ah, okay. centimeters yeah, yeah. okay no but thank you yeah ah, Indu, where are you huh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. talk, uh -huh. talk, thank you uh -huh. but i think you in your outreach you uh -huh. have missed the most important outreach program that you should have what should how I? to convince those dishonest politicians 
that is not outreach and that is called outreach. politics <laughs> sorry but i have very strong views on that i am serious okay i am very serious about that i don't think that outreach will convince the, the politicians the, the delay of the delay of the i know is nothing to do with any of those outreach program we have failed it is only because of the politicians are playing politics yes yeah so i have a physics question not the politics um, yes uh, um yeah here yeah. i can hear you yeah yeah, ha, ha, yeah, right. yeah. so uh, that the fact is given the you know the problem with the the south india uh, yeah. part um so have you considered like plan b and plan c of different venue and with that how is your physics sensitivity the main physics goal that you have you know sort of how they kind of uh, sort of depend on the on the, the venue side i mean because you you need to be prepared if you <laughs> we have looked at seven alternate sites i have looked at seven alternate sites but the thing is that no it's it's a, it's a chicken and egg again like we heard about the ilc right uh, i think we ha we have to try to convince uh, our funding authorities that it will not work out in tamil nadu and therefore they have to give us permission to go to the alternate sites and as we have more time we are finding better and better alternate sites that is not the difficulty but this this transition to the new site has to happen in in a certain fashion which is taking its own time but as i said i am very hopeful that we will be able to actually build this detector in india so maybe the next speaker will have to say something about it yeah any more questions yes, can you say that remaining questions may be addressed to the spokesperson of ino yeah yeah the yeah uh, just for those who do not know the spokesperson of ino is actually the moderator of the session so you can address all questions to him <laughs> okay. okay thank you very much then we will stop here thanks and thanks all the speaker in the morning sessions and we will break and after the lunch we will again convince here at 150 uh,